Okay, wait a sec. Okay, here's a picture of Chris and his trout he just caught. Nice looking trout. Let me get the underwater shot of the release. He says it's a little bit too big. He wants to let this guy go. trick that wouldn't wait for me to take the <laughs> shot. Thanks a lot, Chris. But we did keep a couple, little guys. But that one was a little bit too big. So we let Just it go. A bit. Just a little too big. He's got a fish on. Should I believe him? I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, is it a fish or what? It is a nice little fish, eh? Yeah, it is a nice brookie. Nice brookie, Chris. That's even bigger than the last one you caught. That's a good one. Good one, Chris. I'd say that's a pound and a half, Chris. <laughs> Good catch and release, Chris. Way to go. That was some of the best skill I've seen in a while. Back to the water. Back to the water, fish. So a little about fishing that day. We were both basically using a straight hook with a chunk of worm and a sinker attached about a foot and a half up the line. That seems to be the absolute best lure when you're fishing for walleye or for trout, and especially if they're finicky. Nice release, Chris. So on that particular day, we were fishing with a two horse on the back of my boat. Um, and I've heard different stories and different thoughts regarding whether or not a motor scares away brook trout or makes them not bite. On that day, it certainly didn't affect us. Uh, but on other days, I have used motors and not caught any brook trout. And whether that's because of the motor or because uh, they just weren't biting, I guess we'll never really know. Uh, so as far as my experience, motors don't seem to scare away brook trout or walleye for that matter. I get the award for biggest fish of the night. He he this was the bait. He let go. He let go on this. But uh this is the one. This let's, is the big one right here. He's let's show the release. Back. He's going back. In. There we go. Oh, Lake uh, jumbo perch. <laughs> Ultimate big fish award. Goes to Chris. See the nice yellow fins? The nice, <laughs> nice orange fins there? That's a, that's a nice perch. Look at the Look at the spine. Look at that. That is a true specimen, I tell you what. Oh, yeah. Beauty. It's a good one. Well, that goes in the cooler for dinner. Cooler for dinner. <laughs> cooler for dinner. Yeah, there he is. Done deal. Here he goes. We felt bad about keeping yeah. this perch. He's a spawner, this one here. So we're going to let this big guy go. He's a prime breeder. Prime breeder. So we got this one back into the water as quickly as we possibly could. Didn't want to lose such a key breeder for the system. We forgot to take the measurements, otherwise we would have got the fiberglass mount done, but he'll be remembered forever in our memories. And there he swims off. What a beautiful sight. Lost it? Lost it? Yeah. Aww. And he just fell off. <laughs> you know, that's number four, I think, for supper for me. He's the right size, Chris. He is the right size, so so I'm gonna keep that one. That was pretty good, Chris. I was impressed. You're not with gonna that. catch that. You're not gonna catch that one. That's way too close to that boat. So we were laughing just because this trout jumped like a foot away from the boat. Chris dropped his line down immediately and the trout was on there about five seconds later. Um, now it's not that uncommon, it's just because it seems like when the trout are jumping, they're feeding, and so if you can get your lure down there right away, they're going to bite on your lure, but it was just uncommon just because it was so close to the boat that he had to have seen us when he jumped out of the water. So we ended up keeping five nice brook trout about 10 to 12 inches, just perfect size for supper that day.